Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. And if you are new here, I am TJ, creator of TJ's Magic Touch. In today's video, I will be showing you how to create a filter for Snapchat using Photoshop. First, before we get started, I have to say thank you so, so much for 500 subscribers. It was definitely a goal of mine. I never would have imagined that I'd get here as quickly as I did, but I am very grateful that I have. So a million thanks to all of you for the continued support. I truly, truly appreciate it. If you are new here, please consider joining my YouTube family by hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on so that you are notified every time I upload a new video. Thank you so, so much again, and let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is click on create new. This will open up your new document panel. After opening your new document panel, now you need to set your file up so that you will have it exactly the size that you need in your workspace. So for width, we're going to type in 1080. We're going to be working in pixels. And for height, we're going to type in 2340. We will be working in portrait orientation mode, leaving our resolution at 300, making sure our DPI is set at pixels per inch. After doing that, you'll go down and make sure that you have transparent selected for your background and not any other color. Once you've done that, you will click on create and this will open up your template into your Photoshop workspace. Okay, so I know my workspace looks a little bit different than what you see when you normally open up Photoshop. So for this tutorial, I'm going to set my workspace to Essentials Default. This is the workspace you see when you first open Photoshop and that'll make it easier for you to follow along with me during this tutorial. For today's design, I'm gonna be doing a dinosaur birthday party and I'll be using these images from A and B illustrations off of Creative Fabrica. Be sure to look for the link in the description box below if you are interested in any of these dinosaur birthday clip art. Now for the design, I'll be using the drag and drop method where I click on an image in my folder and drag it into my workspace and then double click to place the image. Control Z will get the image off the screen and now we can get into our actual design for this project. Okay, so since we open this um, file up as transparent, we're going to click on that transparent layer and we're going to drag it down to the plus sign in order to copy it. This gives us a second layer and what I'm going to do with this layer is add color to it. The reason I am doing it this way is because adding anything to layer one as a transparent background, it leaves you in a position where you're not really able to work with that layer. So we don't wanna work in a damaging way that will prevent us from moving further. So what I always do is basically put like a safety space in between my transparent image and then the rest of the layers where I will be designing. So I take layer two, open my paint bucket tool and I paint it white. This also helps me because it's kind of difficult designing on top of that gray and white checkered transparent space. So I simply label layer two as the background that I'm going to erase, design on top of it and I get rid of it when it is time to save my file as a PNG. So I'm going to select my move tool I'll click on the eye just so that you can see that this is your transparent background and now we have this extra layer like a safety buffer in between our transparency and the design we are about to start working on. Now we want to place our guide marks. Today our guide marks will be a little different because we will still be designing outside of them. You'll click on view and scroll down to rulers. This pops up your ruler along the edge. We're going to only use the top and bottom, so we'll click on the top and drag down until we hit 7.0. 
then we'll click on the top again and drag to the very top where we're at 0 0.75 after getting my guide marks in place, I'll use my keyboard shortcut, Control R, to remove the rulers from along the edge of the workspace instead of the alternative way that we did previously by clicking on View and scrolling down to Rulers. Now, what I will say about this template is you see this top line here, there's a space at the top of our guide mark and the same thing at the bottom. This is where you will design for larger mobile devices. Everything inside of the two guide marks will be what you can see on a smaller phone and everything outside of those guide marks will be what you can see on a larger phone. So unlike other templates, we'll design on the entire template because nothing will be getting printed and cut off. To start this design, I'm going to go to my shape tool, select my rectangle tool, and I'm going to draw a rectangle at the top of this template. Since your shapes drop in the last color you were working with, my rectangle dropped in white. So under appearance, I'm gonna click on fill and then I'm going to change this color to blue. I want the blue to mimic a sky in my background when I start dropping in my dyno images. Another alternative is to click on this color panel and the color picker comes up and you can choose any of these colors um, that you see on the screen here. Now I'm going to do my usual, which is my drag and drop method and start dropping my images or dropping my clip art into my workspace. After I dropped in my first image, I noticed this dotted line stroke around my rectangle. So I clicked on the layer, clicked on stroke, and then clicked on this white box with the line through it, which basically means no stroke. And then I continued dragging and dropping clip art into my workspace. Holding control while clicking multiple layers allows you to move those layers together at the same time. Now I'm going to select my brush tool and then I'm going to go to the top where the brush tool is. I'm going to make sure that my hardness is set to zero and I'm going to mess with the size of the brush itself. That's a little too big so I'm going to go up and select it again. Go down for a smaller size until I get the size that I want. This general soft brush will allow me to do um, kind of like some fake clouds almost because the edges are not harsh so i'll just click until i get the shape of the cloud that i want in some places i'll drag and i'll continue to do that until i have all the clouds that i want Now I'm going to start working on the bottom. I'm going to drag in this grassland type um, clip art. It is a dinosaur clip art from a dinosaur pack. I don't think it's included in this pack. So 
so when I figure out or remember where I got this particular image from, I'll be sure to update the description box with this link as well. Now since this clip art did not come with the kit that I'm using, I want to change the colors of it a little bit. So I'm going to click on my paint bucket tool, go down to this little color panel to get my color picker to pop up on the screen. And then I'm going to manipulate the greens so that they are a little bit lighter, but still follow that light, medium, dark pattern that the clip art originally has. I repeat these steps until all three parts of the grass look the way that I want them to look. Now that I have everything where I want it to be, I am going to add some font to this design. And in order to do that, I'm going to click on my text tool, make sure I have the horizontal type tool selected, and then I'm going to choose my font, which is Dino Park. I will leave the link in the description box below for this font as well. After typing my text on the screen, I'm just going to manipulate it a little bit. So in my properties panel, I'm gonna click on color. I'm going to click inside of this paw to select the brown and click okay. Then I'll go down to my FX panel, click on stroke and click on the other orange paw to do the outline for the word that I just typed onto the screen. Clicking on drop shadow puts that shadow behind the text. And then I'll use my move tool in order to adjust the text where I want it on the screen. Now we're going to scroll down to the layer um, that we named background to erase or whatever you named it. You can either click the eye or you can just click and delete the layer altogether. And this gives you your PNG image to use as your Snapchat filter. So now you're going to save it in order to upload it to Snapchat. So if you are like me, you save everything twice. We'll do file, save as, save on your computer. And remember, I use a second monitor, so my file folder actually pops up on my second monitor. But the first time, I am saving this file as a PSD. I am keeping the maximum capability on so that if I need to, I can go and adjust this file later and this is where I also name it. Then I repeat those steps, file save as, save on my computer, and this time I will select save it as a PNG. Now I'll take you over to Snapchat to show you what you do with your PNG filter. Okay, so this is what Snapchat looks like when you type in snapchat.com from your desktop or a laptop. You are going to click on filters and lenses. You want to make sure that you are uploading a filter and not a lens. A lens is for your face and a filter is the frame that we are doing. There are two types of filters. There are community filters and special occasion filters. We are working on the filters under special occasions. After you select it, you will click upload. Once again, my file folder is on my second monitor so you can't see my images actually pop up but when you click upload it opens your folder and then you're able to click on the image that you want in snapchat this is what i was saying earlier about designing on the whole screen this is what your design will look like on a larger mobile device and here it is on a smaller mobile device so you always want to make sure that you design for the larger mobile device and just make sure whatever shows on the smaller device is not cut off. I'm going to go through the rest of the process with you just so you can have an understanding of it or that you can explain the steps to your um, to your buyers. I personally do not do this part for my buyers or my supporters. I simply provide the filter only, but I will assist them with setting up this part of Snapchat. Again, I do not offer this service. There are designers out there that will set up the geofencing for their buyers. 
I do not. I just make sure they fully understand the steps and I give them all of Snapchat's terms of services. I make sure they understand that no licensed, trademarked, or copyrighted images can be in their filter. And if that is something that they want and um, their filter gets rejected, I am not responsible for that. So I make sure that all my buyers fully understand what the process is when uploading a custom filter to snapchat okay with that little spill out the way we're going to click on next and this is where you if you provide this service or your buyer will select their date and time the longer the time period is the more expensive the snapchat filter will cost so if you do three days versus one 12 hours versus two it will cost more I don't know why we just popped up in California but let's take it back home and we are going to go to Houston I actually love our museum district and outside of the health museum the natural science museum has a heart and it's actually perfect to use for this tutorial since they have the dinosaur exhibit so whenever you select a space in snapchat your geofencing you will see your price in the top right hand corner here and it automatically sets to 20,000 square feet the larger the geofence is the longer the dates the more it will cost when you click continue it's going to ask you if you are sure that this is where you want your geofence um place like this is where you want your snapchat filter to be seen after you select yes then you will see the payment screen and on the payment screen you will see the filter that you've uploaded as well as the geofencing that you've selected now i will say make sure that you upload your snapchat filter or that your buyer uploads their filter at least 48 to 72 hours before the date of their party just in case any changes need to be made they have time to resubmit because snapchat does take a minimum of 24 hours to approve custom filters and you want to make sure you have enough time to get your filter uploaded for your event one more thing before we go we're going to click on design and i want to show you that since this is a png if you were to just design generic snapchat filters to just have readily available to issue out to your buyers when they wanted them they can simply add their own text or elements to whatever space you have available so like right here at the top we're gonna click on text add text and I love the name Olivia so we're just gonna go with Olivia Olivia's having a happy birthday we're going to change the typeface font to a script and click done and then you'll see the name pop up on the screen from here you can adjust where you want your text to actually be placed on your filter you can change the shadow behind it which i absolutely love doing drop shadows in whatever program i am working in and you can also click on color and you can change the color of the text as well so if this is something you want to offer or if this is something you want to do for yourself several different people can use the same snapchat filter if you guys want to cover a large place then you guys can share the filter and just drop your own um, bitmoji or drop your own text for your part of the building all right that's it for this video i hope you were able to pick up a thing or two i hope you found it helpful i hope that snapchat filters term of service geofence and all of that makes sense to you please do not forget to like comment share subscribe make sure you have that notification bell turned on so that every time i upload a video they let you know thank you once again for 500 i truly appreciate it, it absolutely means the world to me i could not do this without you and i'm so happy that you are here until the next one bye guys